Good morning, Americans. This is your favorite alien here on the morning of Sunday, June 6th, uh, 5th, June 5th, 2022. Sorry about the senior moment. And for you Americans and humans, I want to do a special commentary today, actually a open video talk to you guys, and the title is The Gorn Threat, as in Star Trek, How to Avoid It in Real Life. Because you got the Mushka to come back to annihilate you guys. So how to avoid your version of the Gorms? Well, frankly, I got to start at the beginning with you guys. Because you guys got uh, watermelons for brains. So here it goes. As they would teach it in my race. To a student around 14. Okay. So let me take your race, for example. If you just had one human being on this planet, one, and the remaining 600, 6,500,000,000 million or so that are here are gone, you could survive for hmm, maybe 10 days, a week or so, but sooner or later, one thing or another will get you. One, loneliness. Two, the environment. Three, sickness. Four, food and water. Because you can only do so much as one person. So, you will be gone, and no humans. If you have two humans, or your odds of survival are a little better, maybe a month or so. If you're lucky and you find everything and the humans over here left you, you can survive maybe a year. Two humans. But eventually the same thing will happen. Something will get you and you will die, and most likely it would be sickness. Can't avoid that, can you? Three, you ought to survive or increase. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you have ten, you ought to survive will start increasing dramatically because you can divert things. You can have a hunter, a defender, a medical person and a domestic. Yeah, you don't know how much you need those, huh? Mm -hmm. Somebody that knows how to cook, somebody that knows what cleanliness is, hygiene, you know, that comes in handy. See what I mean? The more people you got, the more you can survive to a limit. And you have to find out what the limit is. What is the limit for this planet to sustain human life? You have gone above it. This planet can only sustain 4 billion people, and you're 2.5 billion over. That's why in our planet, our adopted planet, we only use 20% of the planet area. Because we have to sustain our lives. We have other colonies, yes, that we found during the centuries. And we also have to protect them from interesting species out there, both humanoids and non, who have your type of thinking here where you don't think about yourselves or your species, you think about what you can get from the planet 
and what you can get to satisfy you at the moment. And you got to change those way of thinking. You got to change. You run like the Americans here run their country on politics and greed with money. And they forget about their people. Therefore, their social structure is collapsing. Their social security is going to be collapsing in 2034. By that time, my host will be gone. <laughs> Good news for him. But how about his descendants? He's got a lot of sisters and nephews. They might still be around in their late 80s. Approaching 90. And, you know, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Yeah. So that's what they say. But it's because of the own ineptness of the country. Same with your other countries along the planet. Some are better than others. But eventually, all of you, because you follow the United States example, are going to disintegrate and die. Because you don't have the human being at the center of your society. And the life forms that live on this planet, whether good or bad, you share the planet with them. You stomp on snakes. You kill sharks because they're sharks. And they kill you. Uh, yeah, but what are you doing in their habitat? Uh, yeah. Hmm, ain't that fun? You got to learn to coexist. We had to learn to coexist. On this universe, you have to learn to coexist. They exist, you exist, and you make an understanding. If you don't bother them, they don't bother you. And sometimes, whether they're the ugliest or the most deadliest thing in the world or the universe, they'll need you. And you'll need them. Just like when we had the three wars with Tamushka. In the second war, we came close to getting annihilated. And the insectoids came to our aid. You don't like cockroaches, do you? You don't like ants? And you definitely don't like uh, the old Egyptian scarabs! Yeah, well, they're part of the insectoid line. But they had a way of looking at things a little different from us. And their ships were a little more advanced than us. Their technology was a little more advanced. And they found out that we had the preference of life. And we understood them as a living being. Okay? They may look different. They may have different things. I mean, we don't eat what they eat, and they sure don't eat what we do, do they? Well, insectoids have an interesting palate, I can assure you that. But, uh, yeah. Mm. But they came to our aid, and we survived, and they survived. Therefore, they're part of our federation. There are insect insectoids that want to annihilate them for dealing with other races. Just like you African Americans here in the whites, you form this hatred to each other because of the situation that you went. You haven't checked it and said, well, we came from Africa, you guys came from Europe, and we were landed here on two different things. We came as slaves, you came as disposable items from you because most of the Europeans that landed here in America were thrown away by the British, okay? You were separatists. You didn't fit over there. And this is what you got to understand. That's why you're here. You're the scourge. And maybe that's why you're here on this planet. You were a scourge someplace else. You don't know. I don't know. 
But it's time to get together and say, we got to put our things down. And putting those manu monuments away from the Confederacy does not help African Americans. You got to leave them there and teach your kids and teach the white kids. This is the way it was back then. And why did we have this hatred for each other? If you can change that and change being black, your African heritage, keep it. Because you'll need that. The whites will need that. It forms part of your human culture. You don't destroy that, but you do destroy your thinking that you have. You're no longer African Americans, you're humans from an African descent from the African continent. And the African natives that are still there, which have nothing in common with you because it's been over centuries, two, three centuries, four centuries since you came here. You go back to your native Africa, there's nothing in common with you and them. They view the world differently than you do. So why not view the world the same? And view the world where you look at a person, his color is different, but he's still a human being. And you don't see that color. You ever thought of that? No. So until you get your differences and your pettiness and everything else out the door, you'll have what you have here in America. Hatred. Mass shootings. Uh, the Supreme Court trying to destroy Roe Ro versus Wade, which is something you need. Is it good? Well, not really, but it's supposed to be a bridge to when you find something better, and you haven't yet, so you got to keep that bridge. Otherwise, you can't cross that big divide. See what I mean? This is your favorite lady saying, get your... Rear ends off what you're doing. Get your head off your rear ends. Take out the watermelon. And think, especially Americans, because you're close to being demised with this president you have. And remember, the answer to your problems is not Democrats. It's not Republicans. It's you. Good day.